Pulse School on realairculture.com is brought to you by Saskatchewan Pulse Growers, DuPont Ferguson Fungicide, and Nodulator XL. Okay, so what is aphanomyces and why should growers be concerned about it? Aphanomyces is a, a quite, or can be a quite serious root rot pathogen and is of major concern in many other parts of the world where they grow um, peas. So if it develops into a major disease here, we will have a big problem in terms of pea production. Yeah, is it new to Canada? Well, it's not new to Canada. It has been reported, I think the first reports were in the mid-1930s in Ontario, and it basically has been reported from everywhere around us. So um, there is a good chance it has been with us for a long time as well, and it probably just, the conditions weren't right for it to really be of economic importance or even be visible in terms of symptoms on peas. So are you seeing it across the prairie provinces now or primarily in Saskatchewan? Um, you know, there is very little data on aphanomyces specifically in terms of how, how widespread and how prominent it is because nobody has really looked for it specifically. There are just the odd reports where people have isolated it and then reported, yeah, we have found aphanomyces, but there is no hard data saying it is at this and this percentage in these areas here. So we don't have that data. And is that because there are, there's a diversity in root rot pathogens? Oh yeah, uh, aphanomyces isn't the only pathogen and there are others that are probably much, much more common like Fusarium species, Rhizoctonia, Pythium. And usually they, they show, sort of show up in groups. It's, it's very rare that you only have one pathogen showing up. It's just certain conditions will probably be more conducive to one pathogen. So maybe the proportion of that pathogen is a little bit higher then. But if you isolate, try to isolate a root rot pathogen from roots, you often get more than one organism out of these root, root rot samples. And do they show as different signs and symptoms, or are they all basically very similar? It's very difficult to sort of separate them just based on symptoms. So you, you do have to isolate, so this is the traditional way, and then look at spores to say, okay, it's this one or that one. Or nowadays, people probably would, would use molecular techniques with, which are more accurate and faster uh, for doing identification. Right, and so are there different control methods for the different pathogens? Well, um, a, a pathogen like aphanomyces is sort of a, a little bit out there because there are actually um, no chemical methods you can use to control it, whereas with the pythium, the rhizoctonia, and the fusarium, there are seed treatments out there that will help you to sort of get your seeds germinating and the seedlings out of the ground. So aphanomyces is a little bit special in the sense that, that there aren't really very good control methods out there, which is why my, we get concerned if we get the feeling, oh, maybe it's, it's in the pool of potential pathogens in the province now. Yeah, and do you think that there will be an increase in that Um I generally, I'm, I, I, I would be surprised because um, Growing conditions usually are not so conducive for Aphanomyces here. It's a, a pathogen that really, really thrives in, in very soggy, very wet soils. Um, it needs free water in the soil to really spread very well and reproduce very well. And it's not a very common occurrence here in the province. We have had three or four quite wet springs in, in certain parts of the province. And I think that's why we may have seen a little bit of a population explosion maybe in those areas. But overall, um, I would be very surprised to see aphanomyces becoming as big of a problem here as it, for example, is in, in France where they grow peas in the winter where they have a lot of rain and the soils are very wet throughout the growing season there. What is it that's unique to aphanomyces that it uses water to that it needs water? Well, um, in contrast to Fusarium or Rhizoctonia, it actually produces spores that can swim. So it has it's sort of a little spore and it has a little bit of a whip-like -like structure and it can actually actively swim through the soil. I mean, not meters, but short distances. And um, it will swim actively towards a pea root. So roots give up 
chemicals and these these little spores can sense them and then will swim towards a, a root and that's why water is so important. So without the water the spores can't swim. Do we know how far they can swim? Uh, I don't think so but I probably would have to search the literature to yeah. see how far it is. It's probably very very short, relatively short distances. So yeah, they wouldn't swim from one corner of a field to the other, yeah. let's put it this way. <laughs> Thank you.